Hey, and welcome back everyone to our weekly Orboot hacking streams here. So, um, if you haven't been following those streams at all yet, uh, you have a, a good day pick because we're going to start over with one of the implementations that we actually wanted to do here uh, in the first place and to everyone else. So yeah, just as I announced last time, um, we're going to start over today. And what we're going to start with is a quick recap of what just happened in the Orboot project. Namely, uh, we just removed a bunch of things. That is one thing I had already mentioned. Um, but we also merged a bunch of changes now, uh, which were for the one main board that we kept in the tree. And that is now our new reference setup for the time being. So uh, let's have a quick look at what we actually see here. So I've already uh, you know, just started a new git work tree here. Um, it's uh, just called Orboot Vision 5.1 start over. And well, I have a corresponding branch name here. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I will be pushing this here later uh, so that you actually have something now to look at. So most uh, of what we've done before while we were working in Orboot was actually uh, just, you know, uh, making a few changes in the existing code of a previous implementation. Uh, which was for the Beagle 5, which is uh, just featuring the same SOC as this board here. Um, so yeah, this is now a complete overhaul. And so I also took the uh, liberty to just, you know, call it Vision 5 now. So yeah. Um, and let's actually talk very, very quickly about the structure that we have in Orboot. So uh, Orboot, as you know, is a fork of core boot. So we also wanted to have a similar structure in a certain sense. So in the uh, core boot project, things are structured in a manner such that um, the main view is always from a specific main board. And then for a specific main board, there may be a few variations or not. Um, that isn't too important right now, but you know, if you just think of the Beagle 5 being essentially the same board as the Vision 5, um, you, know, you, you could already imagine that you may actually have the very same code running on it when you do firmware or maybe something that just differs very, very slightly. So yeah, that's why we uh, talk about variants in that sense. Anyway, so um, the one board that we now have for reference as all boards um, actually sits in a subdirectory. So the main directory where all the main boards are is source slash main board. And then under main board, we have the specific vendor. Uh, in this sense, it's Sunchi. Um, well, also known as all winner, but yeah, we're, we're to, uh, taking this name here, uh, just like the um, Sunchi Linux project, actually, which, you know, also refer to all winner Sunchi. And then we have the specific board name. In this sense, it's Nerja. And yeah, I'm uh, quickly uh, taking a look at this here. So we have two subdirectories in that directory, which are BT0. Uh, that's actually short for boot zero and we sort of inherited that from all winner because they have you know their own firmware implementation also um yeah it's um just just for convenience for us for now so that it roughly resembles uh, what all winner did uh, but we might uh, rename this at some point so if you recall we also talked a bit here about the different stages that we need in firmware just due to the nature of how the hardware is set up um yeah we we might um you know decide on uh, naming again at some point. Uh, for now, it's just being that way. Anyway, so yeah, these are the two stages we have here. And in a similar fashion, we will also have multiple stages for the Vision 5. So we will have one stage definitely uh, where we turn on the spy flash memory mapping. And then in another stage, um, that's where we then jump to. We actually uh, continue with the execution within the spy flash. So yeah, we will just jump to some memory mapped address, which, you know, just sits a bit uh, further behind in the flash. Um, yeah, when we start initially, we don't already uh, have the memory mapped stuff running. So, yeah. Um, anyway, so uh, that's the rough setup. Then just by convention, we will also have a makefile. So the makefile, just as we had it from the start, uh, is essentially for just wrapping, uh, you know, the high level tasks that you need in order to uh, build a specific board. Um, to flash it, uh, run it, you know, w whatever is applicable. Um, but mainly building and flashing, that is, uh, you know, the very common tasks. Um, it could also mean running in an emulator, like in a QMU port, for example, we would do that. 
then we have a few uh, remaining fragments here. Um, well, first of all, there is also a README. I just forgot that. Um, yeah, we uh, actually, I just did that. Um, I put things here in a README because they are very specific um, to the board and the vendor here. Uh, yeah, we, we might hoist that to some other place, but this is also now uh, documenting, you know, how, how you flash the entire board, how you build everything and so on. Um, like, you know, when you want to have an actual payload executed after or boot. Well, and then, uh, yeah, let's talk about the fragment. So there is the star.s. It's actually not uh, necessary anymore. Uh, that was the first initial assembly bits. Um, we currently have that code inline uh, within the Rust code. Uh, but we might actually move it out again, but then we wouldn't have it here, but, you know, rather in the specific directory. And that would just, um, you know, then be uh, imported into the Rust code using a macro. Uh, and then it's, um, yeah, it's, it's nice to have the syntax highlighting in here. Uh, but other than that, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's usually not even necessary to have much code in there anyway. Uh, then we have a, a configuration file here. So this would be for Linux kernel. And I think that's actually even uh, from an older uh, Linux kernel that we used at some point. Uh, you know, we already iterated past that. Um, that will need some overhaul. <laughs> uh, and eventually uh, we have this here. We call it fixed DTFS. DTFS is um, what is essentially the partitioning of a spy flash. And it's got the DTS extension. And DTS is the device tree source, which means um, so from, from the device tree specification that you know from the uh, open firmware uh, standard, um, it means it's a, it's a source file that is human readable. Um, also, you know, sort of easy to write actually. And then we can translate that to a binary form that we would also uh, put within the flash actually. So yeah, there is some sort of self-reference in here. So that was initially how we wanted to uh, lay out the flash part. Um, that isn't yet again in place here, uh, but it's also not too important right now. We will also get back uh, to that at some point. Anyway, so yeah, uh, the main thing here, so we have multiple stages and that means we also need to build, uh, to build and assemble together multiple binaries. Just like, you know, we always need to uh, pull in some payload at some point so that we get one uh, image eventually that we can flash. Um, and now the question is, how do we actually piece things together? And there is something we can leverage, uh, you know, which already exists in the wider uh, Rust ecosystem, and that is called XTAS. So yeah, let me uh, clear this very quickly and show you the high level. Uh, directory here. So this is the uh, root directory of Orboot. Um, there is now a directory called Xtask and within Xtask again we have subdirectories for you know um, specific builds which are uh, for, for the respective vendor like you know uh, many vendors have like you know the, their own special tooling that you would need to use for flashing things or um, yeah, they, they may have conventions, you know, of how the mask ROM works and stuff like that. So that is the knowledge that we put here in X, uh, in X task. And then when we build an image from there, um, you know, we also define the task for like, you know, flashing and so on. So yeah, let's have a quick look at the X task directory because we're going to need something uh, similar uh, at some point. We'll probably not get to that today, but I at least want to, um, you know, outline the concept here. So yeah, let's clean this again and look at the XTAS directory. So as you can see, it's really just a Rust crate, right? So we have a cargo toml and we have a source directory. Um, nothing too exciting right now. And now within the source directory, again, we have the specific directory, as I just mentioned, for a vendor. And then we have a few other files. So yeah, one of them, of course, is the main.rs. Just by convention in Rust, we have the main.rs file, which is the entry point to uh, any binary application that we build, right? And well, then we have a few modules that we then add, and that is then uh, for defining, you know, the very specific tasks eventually. So what I can do now is uh, I can run cargo x task. So that is a subcommand. You already see it from a shell history. Uh, there is cargo x task make, but I just want to run cargo x task for now. And let's see what we get. And I will pass on dash dash help. So yeah, this will now tell us all the options that we have available, right? So 
there is this one option where we can define the main board that we want to build. Um, and then, well, we have uh, the release mode that is, uh, as you know it, uh, usually from Rust. Um, and well, then we have some more uh, very specific uh, things that uh, come from Orboot. So yeah, I'm going to neglect the verbose and uh, quiet mode here. It's uh, not so important for us either. Uh, help, we're just seeing the help. Uh, but what actually makes it the Orboot stuff? So first of all, besides the main board, we have the variant, as we just uh, briefly discussed. And then we have the payload that we want to pass, so to add to uh, the raw Orboot binary. And then we have something which is called DTB again. Um, so, but this is not DTS, no, this is now DTB, and DTB means device tree blob, or sometimes it's also known as FDT, flattened device tree. It's really the same thing, actually, it's the compiled version of a device tree source. So when you compile the device tree source, that's what you use the device tree compiler for, you get one of those DTBs here. And what we typically do is, um, we just build uh, Linux boot as a uh, you know, way to go payload into our project so that we get an image eventually uh, where we start with Orboot and then execute a Linux kernel. And the Linux kernel will then need a DTB, um, at least on the platforms that we're currently working on, which is uh, mainly RISC-5. Um, and this DTB is also just, uh, you know, being passed in addition. So, yeah, um, so much for that. So there are a few subcommands that we already defined. So one of them is, you know, make to build an image, um, well, help. Uh, then GDB, that might be helpful for debugging, but yeah, it requires us to set something up. Then we have the flash command for flashing. And now ASM, so ASM as in assembly, um, it says view the assembly code and what does it mean? It means that we actually disassemble our own code so you know that we can investigate uh, what the compiler did for us. So yeah, it can be very, very helpful sometimes. Um, yeah, it can also help with debugging, right? So when you have the uh, assembly and you know, you know the addresses you're jumping to, you can actually see, okay, uh, what instruction is actually at that address here. So yeah, so much for that. Um, so what we now would need to do is, uh, we would need to define some very raw and rough tasks uh, for our new board. So we're going to define something now for the vision five, um, but we will need to call it star five, right? So star five is the vendor of the board. So let's make a new directory. So we're going to make a dir, we're going to make xtest source. And now in source, we make the directory uh, star, star five. Okay, now um, let's change into this directory. It's empty, of course, as uh, we would expect for a start. And let's just for comparison, have a look at uh, what we already have for Sunchi. So if we look at Sunchi, uh, now what do we have here? We have a mod file, right? So just by convention uh, with Rust. So if you want to define a module, you have a mod.rs file. Uh, and then you can import whatever is publicly exported from there. Well, and then we have a, a more specific file in there. And as you can see, the mod file is actually very, very tiny. It's just uh, 300, not even 300 bytes, actually. So let's have a look what this mod actually does. And well, you may expect it's really just saying um, we're exporting the stuff from uh, the nerja.rs again. And lo and behold, um, we're defining something here, uh, an enum. So, well, that's the enum of board. So in our case, it would be very similar. Uh, instead of Nerja, we would have the version five, well, version five one now, because there is now a second one coming up. Um, so I will also add that number as you already see it here. Um, and then uh, there's this here. This is now the pub part, right? So, well, the enum is also pub, but this here is now the, uh, let's say more important part um, this is actually implementing the board. So what we can actually do is uh, we can just copy over this file here. And now let's see um, that we make some adjustments, right? So first of all, um, mod. So now we're going to have another module, but it's not called Nerja. Uh, it will be called vision 5.1. And in a similar fashion, uh, here we will have the board name 
now this here is actually capitalized, right? So we, we say vision five, one, and similarly here. So now we pick up the enum, right? So here, uh, when we say execute command, um, we just map every board that we have to the specific command to run. So yeah, in this instance, it's the vision vision five one. A bit too stupid to type today. Um, yeah, and instead of Nurja, so this is now just the module uh, that we uh, imported here. We're just saying vision 5.1 execute command. And then we just pass down the command and the features. So features, um, yeah, we will come back to that as well at some point. Uh, but anyway, now we have this sort of boilerplate set up. And now let's see. So what we will need is we need a function being exported here called execute command, right? So uh, let's split this here. So first of all, we will need a vision 5.rs, vision 5.1.rs. Um, and we will put something in there, which is once again, very similar to what we have for the Nurja. So let's have a look um, at the Nurja.rs file. And as you can see, it's already importing a lot of stuff. Um, but regardless what we put in here, uh, the main important thing is this one function here. So we need a pub function. Um, and we can actually just let it do nothing, right? So it doesn't need to return anything as you can see here. So otherwise we would have an arrow here. Um, so we can, we can just say uh, it's an empty function. And now we still need to have some imports though, right? So yeah, we, we need to have uh, this here um, that is already imported by using the full namespace here, right? So it starts with crate. Uh, and well, then we just have a vec string. So yeah, in fact, we can even get away without having any further imports, right? So this is already sort of the boilerplate that we need um, for, you know, just an empty board. And now let's see, what else do we have? So uh, in the Sunchi directory again, um, so this here is now being exported. Uh, now, what, what do we have on the next higher level? We need to import this again, right? So here, um, now we have uh, this file main.rs. So let's go up uh, one directory and let's look at the main.rs. Uh, and well, then we will do a split view and look at target as well. So what do we do in main.rs? First, we pick up the module, right? So now I would say mod vision 5.1, okay. And now, uh oh, it's being a bit unhappy. Um, yeah, never mind. Uh, why is it unhappy? Because the module is actually called store five, right? I already messed this up. So yeah, this needs to be the vendor mod store five. Okay, now the linter is also happy again. Um, and now we would actually need to define uh, what it means to have this module. So yeah, if you look at this here, these are now the main commands. That's what you already saw when we looked at the help, right? So we have the make, the flash, asm, and gdb commands. Um, we have this enum here for different types of flash memory. Uh, that is not currently applicable to the uh, vision 5 here, uh, but it was for, uh, for the D1 SOC, so that can boot from you know many different uh, uh, flash storages. Uh, and you know, for the flashing tool, it's actually important to uh, you know supply this. So yeah, um, that's all nice and stuff. But yeah, now let's look at where actually we we see the Sunchi stuff being uh, pulled in. So uh, we we need to have an enum somewhere uh, which lists all the main boards again, right? So yeah, we we can actually see it here. So here we're saying main board is an option string. Um, and let's see where main board is actually used. So uh, we have it here. This is just the help text. So this is like when you don't specify a main board uh, or, or you specify something that doesn't really exist, um, you would need to pass something. And otherwise it would just execute the command. Uh, what does it mean to execute the command? Um, target is actually looking at the main board to use. So yeah, this might already work actually. Let's uh, quickly scroll down again. So do we have any specific reference to Sunchi here? I, I don't see anything actually, but let's search. Let's make sure. I, I don't see it here, right? So 
Yeah, and I don't see it here either. So let's see what happens now. Uh, when we just say cargo x task, uh, and then let's say make, and let's see if it's listing us the main boards that we have. So yeah, we, we already get a few warnings here. Um, I guess that is okay for the time being. Oh, it's actually a bit, <laughs> it's actually a bit stupid. So yeah, I already forgot something. So let's have a look again at the star five uh, mod.rs. Um, what does it say? It says association function is never used, execute command. Uh, even though it is actually a, a pub. And here it says vision 5.1 is never used, which is also interesting because we actually have it down here. Okay, yeah, maybe I'm missing something here. Um, shouldn't be too important right now. Anyway, so what, what happens when we now say uh, cargo x test make, and we say the main board shall be the vision 5.1. Will this work? Well, um, it says it can't decide a target for X task. So, ah, okay, sorry. It has to be a vendor and then mainboard actually. So yeah, that would be star five, star five, and then slash vision five one, um, which apparently does not work here. So let's see, when instead we just say, Sunshi Nerja, do we get something? Yes, it's starting the build process. Okay, so we have to figure out what's going wrong here. Um, it's saying can't decide target for task, right? And we were actually looking at this target stuff already. So how does it work again? So we have this mod here called target. Oh, and target is going to pick up the uh, args for execute command. Okay, so let's have a look at target. We actually <laughs> copied that already because we knew we would need to look at that. And here we see, oh, it's using the Sunshi crate. Okay. Um, well, it's, it's using Sunshi from the current crate. So crate by convention also in Rust, that means, you know, it's from your own crate. So let's do the same with the star five module now. If we save it, you know, the interest um, being a bit unhappy here because it's not being used yet. Um, but yeah, we can actually do the same as we have here. Uh, now just for the uh, star five. So yeah, uh, we just need to match on uh, a different vendor. And where do we get vendor from? So first of all, well, we now say here uh, star five. Um, that won't be understood, right? So this looks a bit boilerplate again. So we just put star five in a bunch of places. Um, that's okay for now. Uh, but yeah, we, we need to define it, right? So here, uh, in a similar fashion as with Sunji, we say star five, and we will need to uh, say, uh, we, we put the board definition here, right? So uh, whatever we define uh, to be the boards, and yeah, again, we need to replace Sunji with star five. Okay, that almost looks good. Um, except it's a bit unhappy again. So here I said star five with an uppercase F, that's their, uh, that's their usual writing. So yeah, we're gonna use the same. And yeah, as you can see, uh, the linter is still being a bit unhappy about this. So yeah, we, we will figure out why in a bit. Um, yeah, and here you can already see, uh, there is this uh, function here called parse target. So up here, um, this is just implementing the target uh, trait, right? So yeah, this is really just for executing a command. So anything implementing that uh, target trait would need to have this function, um, which is actually defined here, right? So yeah. Oh no, it's actually not. Where is it defined? Do we have the definition for that somewhere? Um, yeah, no, we don't actually. So th yeah, that's not really defined here in the struct, um, but that's okay. Anyway, so yeah, what do we need? So yeah, these are actually just uh, like, if you know from OO, like member variables and so on in Java, it's, it's a similar thing here in the struct. Okay, so what do we need to do? We need to 
decide on uh, what board to use now uh, in this function, which is called parse targets. So we get the path uh, and the main board parameter. Okay. Um, so let's have a look uh, what happens if we just add our new target. So we would say star five, uh, we would say vision five one. Now this is the vendor star five. Now we also get auto completion, which is pretty nice. Um, and we would say, instead of Sunji, we would say uh, star five again. And now for the board, uh, so instead of Nurja, what is the board? We have the vision five one, and again, we get auto completion. Nice. All right. So yeah, we, we got that part implemented. Now let's see about uh, parse target stir. So parse target stir is really just a wrapping function looking at the source mainboard directory, and then it's checking if there is a corresponding vendor and board directory. If it doesn't exist, it says path not exist, right? So did we get this? Um, no, we didn't. We actually uh, got something else. Uh, it said can't decide target for task. Okay, where did that come from? Uh, decide. Okay, we, we don't even have that in here. So I guess it came from here. Yeah, right. So that came from here. Let's see if we already get past this now. So we're going to say again, access make, and we're going to uh, try to build our new main board. <laughs> yeah, and hello, Zebel. Welcome to the stream. All right. And so we're still getting this message, can't decide target for task. And why do we get this message still? So let's actually see what the condition for this message is. Uh, let's make this larger again. So it's saying, um, if, if we cannot pass our target, right, uh, this is what we, we would get this error. So target is what we're passing in here. Uh, essentially, this is our target, right? So the vendor and the main board name. And uh, well, um, if, if we don't get anything, uh, we will ah, look at this. Um, okay. This is now interesting. So this here is if let sum, if let sum um, will give you uh, back the value on success. However, um, what happens if we get an error down here? Uh, we, we could change this now because we don't actually just want to see this message. Would be nice to have, you know, some other error which occurred. So if, if we don't get anything, um, Actually, we would see some error, I guess, right? So let's let's have a look at this here again. So what do we return? So we return um, some something that would match here. So let's look at the parse function again. So we're looking at parse target, uh, and parse target is here. Parse target again uh, is returning this here, right? So it's returning some target, some vendor, uh, and a board. And the corresponding feature is not too important right now. Um, yeah, that, that's for specific variants, like you know, different flash parts, for example, and things like that. Anyway, um, now this here is the interesting part. So uh, this here is now failing. Um, we're we're not finding. Uh, we're we're not hitting this here. And why are we not? Why are we hitting this? So let's see what we ran. We ran star five vision five one. At least uh, at first sight, it doesn't look like a typo to me. Neither does it here. Um, okay. But um, we have to pass this here first, right? So this is actually another branch under, uh, under parse target stir. And parse target stir um, well, get us an error if something doesn't exist here, right? So this here should happen. So we would get this uh, trace path not exist. So how do we get this uh, trace? Can we say uh, dash V here for being more verbose? Uh, will that get us the trace? Or do we have it somewhere uh, in here already? At least I don't see it. 
Uh, let, let's see what happens when we put dash v for being more verbose. Um, do we get anything new? No, I don't see anything actually. Okay. Um, yeah. So yeah, as you can see, this is uh, already um, quite far, but you know, still a bit of a fresh setup, so we don't have uh, handling for everything. So yeah, this uh, might need some some better handling, uh, or I need to figure out how to get the tray. So uh, let's see if um, let's see if we get something from help here. Do we have something for getting a trace? I already uh, added the dash v right for being more verbose. So we're saying verbose. Then we run the make subcommand and give it the main board. Uh, let's see if we actually get um, get something when we say make help uh, dash dash help like this. Oh right. So uh, now this could be uh, interesting actually. So let's put a dash v also down here, right? So we put it in the make subcommand. Maybe that gets us something more. Um, yeah, I, I don't see anything actually. Okay, that's not how it works. Uh, now where does the trace macro come from anyway? It's coming from log. So yeah, we should be able to get something more from this. Um, yeah, should we look this up? It's, it's coming from the log crate. Is that something? I, I'm not even sure actually if that is a specific crate or uh, something internal. I haven't checked yet. Anyway, um, yeah, I want to skip this now. What I want to do is um, I want to create a, a directory already. So let's say make dir, uh, and we're going to create the uh, star five slash vision five one directory. Uh, dash p of course, so we need to do this recursively because we don't have the uh, star five directory. And of course, I already forgot this here, we need to put it in main board. So yeah, does that now get us uh, past the issue that we were seeing? Uh, this looks like it's doing a bit more actually. So let's see what happens. Um, yeah, it actually ran successfully. So yeah, we just get the very, very basic uh, build setup in here. Nice. So let's do the following. Um, let's already commit this. So we're going to uh, say, uh, we get add the access directory. And well, um, now we don't have anything actually in the uh, directory we just created, right? Um, so that would be technically a bit of a problem, uh, but we can uh, work around that by already um, bootstrapping an empty module in there, right? So um, yeah, just for comparison, let's look at the uh, main board again that we already have. So uh, what do we do? Uh, what do we have in there? Well, at least we have a make file, right? And so we will do the very same. Um, let us just create a make file there. And so we, we touch the make file. So this is now just an empty file. Um, it won't do anything yet, uh, but at least we have it, right? So yeah, um, this will be enough so that you can now run the X task again on your machine, uh, just from uh, what I'm going to push. So we're gonna say, uh, we commit this git commit dash sm. Um, and we're saying create new main board. And the main board is the star five slash vision five one. All right, so uh, this is just some build setup boilerplate so far. And now the question is, what do we need to do uh, in order to actually implement our own board now, right? So yeah, we're going to do the very same actually as here. Uh, so I'm going to um, jump into the main board directory that we just created. So uh, the vision 5.1 directory. And now we're gonna say, uh, we're creating a module with cargo and how does that actually work? Uh, I actually forgot. So I need to look at the help here. So we can say cargo new and we can say cargo init. And with new, we can say create a new cargo package. And with init, we can say in an existing directory. So yeah, we're going to create something new and we're going to say cargo new. 
Um, let's see if that actually gets us some help. Like, you know, it could ask us for like the name and so on. Um, well, it doesn't. So let's see. Uh, we need to supply the path, right? So the path would be, let's just uh, for convenience also call it BT0. Um, so BT0 will be corresponding to what the vendor called second boot. Um, anyway, yeah, it's called a binary application BT0 package. Now let's look at what we got. It's, um, you know, spitting out a bunch of stuff. Uh, it's saying uh, current package believes it's in a workspace when it's not. Um, well, actually it, it, it sort of is. Uh, compiling this new package may not work due to invalid workspace configuration. So yeah, um, that's the next thing we need to do. So we do have a workspace set up. And how do we do this in cargo? So let's look at this cargo.toml file here. Uh, here you say we're declaring a workspace and we get the members, right? And now we got this here, uh, source main word Sunchi Norja. So we're going to add our star five slash vision five one. And lo and behold, we just uh, fixed our issue here. So yeah, um, when we now look at the uh, BT0 directory, what do we have? We have a cargo.toml file and we have a source directory. What's in the cargo.toml file? So the cargo, cargo, uh, sorry, I wanted to switch here. Okay, so in the cargo.toml file, we just get the name. Uh, we got a version and the rest edition. Uh, well, and then some help for, you know, getting us further. Uh, what else do we have? So in source main, well, uh, we have a little hello world function. Um, here's problem number one. How do you print a hello world if you don't have any hardware set up yet? So yeah, this is now for a hosted environment, right? So if we had a hosted environment, we would now just say uh, cargo run and off we go, right? So we would see hello world. We can actually do this now. Let's say cargo run. Um, it will now just compile the program and well, we see hello world, right? Uh, but that's actually not what we want. We don't want to see Hello World. Uh, what we want to see instead is uh, we want to run that code on a different device. And the device even has a different architecture, right? So if we look at this here, um, it's saying it's it's running this here, right? So yeah, uh, we, we can look at uh, what's in this directory here. So when it says running this, so this is now a file, right? So in... Uh, and firmware, uh, blah, de, blah, BT0 under the debug directory. So yeah, if you don't pass dash dash, um, what is it, not production uh, release. If you don't pass dash dash release, uh, you get a debug version of your binary. So yeah, this is now a file, which is an elf, right? And the elf is for 64-bit Linux on x86. So yeah, this is what you see, right? So it's x86-64, an elf, 64 bit executable for Linux. Well, with GNU, but yeah, we don't really care about GNU here. Um, so yeah, this is now for a Linux kernel. So it's uh, actually doing some Linux syscalls and stuff. And that's not what we're interested in. So what we want to do is um, when we say print hello world, uh, we want to write to a UART, right? So we would need to have a driver for that again. Yeah, we already had that in the past. We're not just going to revive that and we're going to uh, use a different model for writing the driver. Anyway, what do we need to change now actually so that we can build this um, for our different architectures? So um, let's for comparison uh, look at the other directory that we have. So in the uh, not not source of broken, sorry, um, that, that's from things we're going to work on again. So in, in source mainboard Sunchi Nurja. Now well, let's look at BT0 and let's see what we got here. So we also got a cargo.toml file. Oh, we got a build.rs file. And let's actually look a bit closer. We also got a .cargo directory. And what's in .cargo? Uh, well, that's also a convention thing by cargo. Uh, there is a config.toml file. What is the config.toml file here? Well, that's the configuration for um, the target architecture that we're building for, right? So this here would be RISC-5 64 iMac or IMA-C. So yeah, this is for integer multiplication, atomics and compressed instructions. 
Um, and then we're supplying a linker script here. Um, yeah, that is uh, interesting. Um, but yeah, we're, we're not really uh, interested too much in that. So we will just do the following. We'll just copy this over. Uh, and instead of Nurja, uh, we will put our own board name in here. And well, where is that, um, where is that file actually to be found? So let's look at the source directory. We don't have it here. So yeah, we will do something in our build process so that this works and it won't tell us, hey, I don't find this file. Anyway, so yeah, uh, copy time again. So let's cp-r request if you copy uh, the other main board, uh, not vision five, but um, we will take sunji narja bt cargo. We're going to copy that in here. And then, well, the target architecture is the same, right? We're uh, still talking about uh, RISC-5 64-bit. And yeah, we're just going to rename this here. So instead of Nurja, we're saying uh, this is the vision 5.1. All right, so we got that part. So now there is still some minor difference. So we got the source and cargo Toma file. Uh, but up here, we also had this build.rs file. Now what's build.rs? Let's have a look in here. Oh, look at this. Um, so we got we got this const here, nurja flash. Uh, it could also be named something else, but doesn't matter too much right now. And if you look at this and you have seen linker scripts before, um, well, this uh, might be very familiar to you. And now you also see uh, where this linker file would be coming from actually. So yeah, it's actually being implemented here in the build.rs file. And this is creating this file uh, in, in a build directory, right? So yeah, uh, we're just going to do the very same as here, um, but we will need to define some, some different uh, places here. For example, we will have SRAM in a different place. Um, yeah, this here will be roughly similar uh yeah actually we, we can take about all of this here so yeah let's just copy this over again so we're going to cp the build.rs file uh, we can do it recursively it doesn't really matter if we provide that flag um yeah so we're going to do the same but i would just discard the name here because it, it doesn't really uh you know make any difference really sorry um yeah, I mean, here here we can still have it. So let's say vision 5.1. Okay, um, nice so far. And now we need to uh, make a change here. So SRAM, where does our SRAM actually start? So yeah, on the um, nerd job, this is where it starts. Uh, or, well, that's the D1 SOC. Now we need to look at our data sheet again, right? And we did have the memory map in there. So. Yeah, let's look at this here. Um, this is the memory map of the star five SOC JH7100 that we already looked at. And so where do we find our SRAM? Well, we got this here. We have 1800 quad zero, right? So this is exactly what we're going to put there. And let me zoom in because I think it's otherwise hard to read. So yeah, this here is now the SRAM address 1800 quad zero. Um, as you can see, there is a bit more SRAM. Uh, we experimented a bit with that in the past, but yeah, it doesn't really matter for us right now. Uh, it's really just about the base address that we need here. Okay, so uh, 1800 quad zero, like that. And well, we also got 32K if I'm not mistaken. Well, I'll just close it. Let's open it again. Um, how much is this? Uh, two zeros. Let's uh, fire up our favorite calculator, Node.js. Um, so what does Node.js say? Well, we say hex two zero and then four zeros again. Um, this is what we get. Uh, now we divide this by eight to get the kilobytes and it looks like, well, that's actually 16k, right? So yeah, we only got 16k. Um, that shall be okay. Let's also change that part. Okay, 
Now, there is a few things here uh, which look a bit weird, and uh, that is mainly this here. So if you, um, if you read this Egon here, that's also a name, uh, but yeah, for the D1 SOC, and that's actually coming from all winner in general, uh, you know, you, you need to have a specific header, and that is then being picked up by the mask ROM by convention. But we're not going to need this here because, um, yeah, we're on a different platform. We're just going to have main here. Um, and then that should be it. Now we're going to remove this here because we just called it flash. And off we go. All right. So we got that part. And now the question is, um, well, uh, if, if we now build this, so how do we do this? We would just say cargo build, right? Uh, and we'll say, oh, we can't find the crate for std. Well, that's because we're no longer in a hosted environment, right? We're in a no std environment. So we are on bare metal. So now we cannot run something like println anymore, right? So yeah, we actually would need to have our own panic handler. Yeah, so what we need to do is we need to add some more boilerplate again. And let's do that very quickly. So how do we do this? Um, once again, uh, we're going to do a split view and we're going to borrow this again from our other implementation in Sunshi. So yeah, as I told you, we're using it as a reference now. So we look at BT0 source main. So what do we implement here? So first of all, we got something which looks a bit funny. It's called naked functions. A bit more on that later. Uh, yeah, we get these asm imports. So we, yeah, we need to do some assembly stuff. That's why we need that. Um, yeah, allocation error handler. Uh, that's also uh, nice, but we don't really need it right now. Uh, but we're going to do these, uh, these two here. So this is definitely necessary for a start, right? So we're in a no std environment and we need to declare it here. Okay, we don't have a main function, even though we can call our main function main. Um, it sounds a bit <laughs> stupid, but yeah. Uh, this here is a convention for, you know, hosted environments. And if you have a non-hosted environment, well, you can freely just choose your uh, name of the main entry point. Um, and that's just, you know, the convention of uh, what your assembly code would then jump to. Anyway, so yeah, you already see a lot of more stuff uh, being pulled in here. Um, and one of them is the panic info here, right? So this is for uh, the default panic handler. Um, it's getting us this panic info struct. So when something panics, we can, uh, you know, print some info like, hey, uh, the board just crashed. Okay, what else do we have? So yeah, let, let's see about those here. So we have a few modules. Uh, one is called logging. One is called flash. One is called MCTL. That's the memory controller. That is something, um, yeah, I hope we can also implement on this board here. So that would be for DRAM initialization. Um, yeah, then uh, we get something uh, defined called entry point. Uh, here it says taken from Orbit. Um, <laughs> that's again, one of the old comments. So yeah, we started uh, designing this here, you know, on a separate project, you know, just to uh, prototype and iterate very quickly. Um, but anyway, yeah, we might, we might use uh, the same here. Um, yeah, that's, that's really just for uh, calling the main function. Then we're passing to arguments and those two arguments on risk five, um, again, by convention, um, that is the hard ID that we're passing. So that's the, like the processor core or a hardware thread actually that we're running on. And the other one would be the device tree blob that is being passed onto the payload. Um, yeah, it, it doesn't even matter here now because this is a previous stage where we don't even use the um, device tree yet. But yeah, that's um, where it comes from. What do we have here? So now this is the funny part. So this is a naked function, right? So uh, yeah, in, in Rust, if we have something which we annotate as unsafe, uh, we also put our uh, safety information here. So even though it's unsafe, it doesn't mean it's uh, totally uh, bogus, right? Um, there are some constraints as to when, in fact, it would be safe to use. And well, here we, we don't have much of a comment. Uh, it just says um, naked function. Anyway, um, yeah, we're going to have something similar probably. Um, it's just not going to be uh, like, I don't know, uh, doing a jump here. Right, so this here is jumping past this Egon header that I told you about. Um, yeah, we will not have that. Um, 
Yeah, this is the Egon header again and a lot of boilerplate stuff. Uh, again, Egon. Yeah, but now is the uh, main part. So yeah, this is now a link section. And a link section is also something uh, that you already saw. So in the build.rs file, we were saying uh, we're keeping um, this part here, right? So yeah, um, it also says there is some offset and length to this here. So there is a um, there is a definition here that is being used by Xtask later on. Uh, well, not not exactly, but um, you know it's filling in those values. Uh, so yeah, it won't be. Um, it won't be necessary for uh, what we're building here uh, be because we don't have to have this extra header, right? Uh, so yeah, in that regard, uh, the platforms already differ a bit, uh, but what we will need to have is definitely something uh, that will be further down. I put a lot of documentation in here actually uh, this year. Again, so we have a naked function um, and this is now the uh, core entry point so yeah, this is what we will need. Um, and let's actually uh, copy over uh, parts of this. So yeah, we will have this um, naked function. Sorry, that was the wrong thing. Uh, yeah, we will have a naked function. Um, let's also just call it start and put some asm in here. And then the asm would close at some point and that's already it now you see um, uh, okay yeah we, we don't need this uh, now now you see we could put in some assembly instructions here right so yeah what do we uh, do here for the um, assembly instructions so we, we could do something stupid um, we don't actually have to we should have some stack set up right so that is uh, definitely useful so yeah, we could just do this here yeah let's do the stack preparation only um, and then call a function called main and this main function is now what we just defined down here right so this main function is going to run our main code now when we save this it's being a bit unhappy so first of all uh, yeah, it's complaining about the naked, right? So we're going to uh, copy over this feature. So a feature here in this regard is something that we get from Rust Nightly, right? So in Rust Nightly, um, there are feature flags, which you know are uh, not yet uh, stable um, uh, stable implementations in, uh, in the Rust stable edition, uh, or not, not stable edition, but in the stable uh, release version, right? So. Yeah, here we need to explicitly opt into using the features. Okay, what else do we need to do? Um, it's saying naked functions must contain a single asm block. Is that the case? Well, it cannot find the asm macro in the scope, right? So yeah, where did asm actually come from? Um, yeah, it comes from core. So yeah, we need to also uh, say we use core asm. So we're going to do this. Yeah, panic info, that's for later. That's okay. And now what else do we get? Um, it says expect the exclamation mark, but it found parentheses. Um, yeah, about that. Let's see. Um, what do we get? So yeah, let's look again at this here for comparison. Okay, so we have the annotation. We're saying it's naked. Uh, we have an export name. We got the link section. Okay, now we say asm. We have a few instructions. And now the asm is being closed here and this is where the function ends. So, yeah, do we have the same thing? Oh, interesting. Yeah, this is also something we actually still need to use uh, something for it says invalid ABI found C. So yeah, how do we get this? Um, well, we uh, need to uh, do some imports or uh, or features again, right? So how do we get this C thing? Um, good question, actually. Let's see if we can figure this out. So 
Yeah, this is for pointers. This is for intrinsics. That's what we're going to need later. Uh, okay, we got the embedded health stuff and so on. That's also for later. Now the drivers also for later. Um, macro use. Oh, do we, do we just say macro use here? Uh, sometimes I'm a bit unsure about things because I'm also still a bit new to Rust. But let's see if we can just put the macro use here and that's it. Is that it? Can we just put it in like nowhere here? No, only has an effect on extern crate and modules. Okay, so this is an annotation which is for the logging module here. So it doesn't really matter for us. Um, okay, what, what else do we need? Uh, let's see again. So yeah, here again, we also have pub unsafe extern. Well, here it's actually uppercase C. Is it? I mean, the other one was lowercase and here it's not complaining, right? So yeah, let's, okay, let's do the following. Um, let's look at this here uh, in, in a larger view. Um, oh, wow, we also have wrapper C in here. Uh, that is also interesting, but I want to, uh, yeah, I want to get to this part again. Okay. So what do we have? So first of all, um, yeah, let's also copy over this annotation, jump over head data. We don't really have head data jump to executable coast, uh, code. Um, actually we say set up stack and jump to executable code. Okay. Uh, Rust ABI is unsupported in naked functions. Okay. So wh what can we figure out about this? Um, here it is actually uppercase C. Did I just mess this up somehow? Okay, I did actually. Okay, I'm sorry. That is um, my mistake. Okay, now that is fine. Um, C is okay. Now it says expected exclamation mark because of return type. Okay. Um, well, it looks the very same to me, to be honest, except that we got uh this oh yeah okay so yeah we still need to fill in a few variables here right so yeah we need to fill in the stack the stack size um and the main symbol right so oh and then there is also options no return yeah that will also be important okay so main we got main down here that is okay. And we got the stack and the stack size. So let's just copy that over as well. Um, yeah, this is again a link section. So let's put it uh, just above here. Oh, we also need the stack size. So we don't need a large stack, just 1K is uh, already enough here. And lo and behold, it's uh, happy. Okay, so can we now say cargo build? Well, it says, well, we're still in need of a panic handler, uh, but none is found, right? So do we actually have a panic handler here? Um, well, actually we do. Uh, so we're, we're just going to use the same panic handler. Um, it's not doing much. It's just printing the information like where the panic occurred and it will say in which file and in what line um, or, you know, if that cannot be determined, it would say at unknown location. That's okay. Uh, I would do a spin loop here. Um, technically, we could also do a wait for interrupt WFI, but yeah, whatever. Uh, let's just keep it like that. Um, and now we actually need to uh, pull in, where is it? Uh, panic info. Oh, we actually already had panic info. Okay. Okay, but now we have a problem because we still cannot use println, right? So. Where does println actually come from? Um, we need to implement that. And we don't have it right now, so we're leaving this as a to-do. To-do, implement 
print on. Well, it's the same actually as print, just you know by convention adding uh, some line breaks behind that. Uh, but that's it. Yeah, when we implement it, uh, we will also get rid of this warning here, which is now saying, hey, you're not using panic info. Yeah, we're not doing it because we can't. Um, can we now cargo build? Yes, now it's being happy. Okay, so what do we do? Uh, what was the last commit message? Actually, it said create new main board. Okay, so now we're going to add again. Uh, we say create add um, dot. Okay, so we got a few new files. We got the config toml file, the cargo toml file, the build.rs file, and the main.rs file. So we're going to say git commit. Uh, and now we can actually reference the new main board that we already created. So we're gonna say surfer vision five um, bootstrap bt0 stage. And yeah, let's push that already to get, oh, we don't have that yet, okay git push dash u origin and we call it orboot vision 5 start over um yeah we can actually already create a pull request for it right so we just say uh gh the github command line tool we're saying pr create dash df so yeah this is for creating a draft pull request that's okay and off we go okay so what do we have we already have the x task set up now um, and we have the first stage set up. Uh, but in fact, we still don't have any uh, real code that we could be running, right? So yeah, what do we need to do now? Um, we need to have a driver for the UART, right? For a start. So we always want to be able to access the UART. Now, the problem is um, we need to look a bit uh, back into the past and figure out how that worked. Okay, so for that, uh, let's start again and look on the left hand side. So here I was already a bit deep down in a directory. I was in access source. Okay, let's go up to the root directory again. So this is orboot root. And you see here we have the source.broken directory. And what do we have in source.broken? Well, um, actually we don't have anything. This is just the emulation boards that we also wanted to bring back again. Um, yeah, so anyway, if anyone feels to uh, feels like doing this, um, please go ahead. Maybe since we're talking about REST 5 here mostly and you followed along, uh, you can actually already uh, pick up the QMU RISC 5 directory here and start over with that. So yeah, the idea would be, uh, you know, just do the same bootstrapping that I did here and then look at this here for reference, right? Um, now, the problem is uh, we don't have the um, code anymore here uh, in the currently checked out tree. Um, so what I'm going to do is, as I told you, I have a work tree. Uh, I also have this work tree. And uh, here we actually still have the uh, Beagle 5. And as you can see here, uh, we, we didn't have the multiple stages, right? So we only had one stage and we only had the source directory. And in the source directory, we only had main and uart. So this is what we're now going to look at for reference. So first of all, let's look at the uart really because we don't really want to look at main. And as you can see here, uh, there is a bunch of register definitions and stuff like that. Um, and it's actually really quite some code, right? So yeah, and this was implementing the old driver model that we had in Orbit. So yeah, by convention, we had these um, P write and P read functions. Uh, then we have the stat, uh, stat and cuddle, so the status and control. And well, we also got the init and shutdown. Well, shutdown isn't really doing anything here. Uh, and so is instead or a control in this sense. Yeah, and if you look at this and you know operating systems, then this might be very familiar to you because this is essentially the driver model that also many operating systems use, right? And for many devices that we actually have in our SysFast system, for example, um, you know, we, we have files that can be used for reading a status or you know, uh, controlling a device. Um, let's say like, you know, uh, what, what do we have in, in, in Sys typically? Uh, like, you know, this here, for example, uh, for reading out the temperature, uh, right? So we can look at the value here in temp. Um, 
yeah and then here uh you know we, we get the mode so this would be more like a control file uh so let's see we get the mode it's enabled um can we disable it we can just uh can we just write to the file and say disabled but i don't really want to disable it because it doesn't really make sense um <laughs> i don't want the machine to overheat or anything so i'm not going to do that um but yeah there there are many things here in the sys file system uh, where you can you know really control your hardware and yeah so this is where it's coming from um but the way it's been done um yeah it didn't really work out too well and we decided to switch over to something that you may know from rust embedded already if you've uh, looked at that at some point and that is the embedded hell so hell is h-a-l for hardware abstraction layer and for for um you know uh, just having something very portable uh, across many different architectures chips and so on um, they define the necessary subset uh, for a few things in hell and you know one of them is actually a uart another one would be spi the serial peripheral interface uh, they got i squared c you know all the very very basic buses that you need um, in Orbit, at some point, we will also need something else like uh, PCIe, uh, you know, PCI Express that you already know from your desktop machine probably and stuff like that, right? So yeah, here in Linux also, um, you know, we get the PCI devices like on the x86 machine I'm hosted on here. When I say LSPCI, I can list the PCI devices, right? And they also needed to be bootstrapped by firmware at some point. Uh, let's make this a bit readable. Yeah, here you can see I'm, uh, you know, on an Intel platform 11th gen so that is um was a tiger lake yeah oh it's actually also written here um yeah and you know then we got a bunch of devices here and yeah we will have to have something similar and i'm not sure if the rust embedded group will pick this up um it might not make too much sense because they were usually targeting microcontrollers and microcontrollers typically don't have pcie <laughs> Um, yeah, you know, except for maybe some uh, some special ones. So technically, you could also have PCIe on a microcontroller. Um, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Let's uh, let's not uh, talk too much about that right now. Um, let's actually get back to writing some code here. So what do we do? Um, I would like to just be able to use the UART that we already had, and so we we figured this out at some point. Um, so there, there was a mode switch that we could do, right? So for putting the UART on a different header. So we, we uh, had to use the GPIO configuration for that. Um, and the other thing we could do was um, we could change the baud rate, right? So we would need to have some configuration and so on. Um, but it's it's actually not the UART itself. It's really just, uh, you know, more like the configuration around it. And if you look at this here, um, that doesn't even implement that part, right? So yeah, there is no such uh, configuration in here. There is only this UART init. Um, yeah, actually, this is where we had the baud rate, right? Okay, so yeah, never mind what I just said. So we do have the baud rate configuration, but we don't have the GPIO setup here. Um, but we need to do the GPIO setup first in order to be able to use it at a different baud rate. So because what we're doing is the following. When we flash the board, we're using a lower baud rate, 9600. That is just defined by the tools that we have. And then if we switch to a higher baud rate, because I you know, have this one adapter connected at baud rate 9600, we actually want to switch to the other header, um, you know, so that we can uh, you know, just have Minicom running or something and then, uh, you know, using the other baud rate. So, yeah, we, we wouldn't need to switch like mid-flight and, you know, create extra tooling again. That wouldn't make any sense. So we're just making our lives easier with that. Um, but we could also just, instead of doing this here, um, we could also just uh, leave this out for a start. And instead of saying you are in it, uh, you know, just do a few writes. And we could do those writes um, uh, actually right away because the mass prom should already set up something. Um, I, I'm no longer sure actually, but we can see about it. So yeah, how would that work? So if we look at this, um, 
So w when we, when we write to the UART here, it's it's using this x8 function. What does the x8 function do? Uh, x8 is calling x4. What does x4 do? Uh, well, it's doing a put C. And what does put C do? Um, well, put C is reading the serial inline, so uh, it's it's reading the serial input. Uh, there there is this line status register here. And well, that's just checking for, you know, whether it's ready to um, get some uh, new byte to output. So you now you need to wait for the first byte to be transmitted until you can uh, send the next byte and then, you know, wait for that again and so on. Um, yeah, technically we don't really need to do this. So what we can also do is we can just um, write to the THR uh, register. So that's the transmit holding register. Let's just see if we get some output, right? So, um, yeah, uh, yeah, let's actually do that. So the THR, rec THR, transmitter holding register, is just at the zero offset of the uh, UART base and the UART base is this here. So yeah, we're going to just hack this into the main function right now. Um, because it's easier, right? So we already have this source uh, main.rs and then source main.rs. Uh, sorry. Um, let's, let's just define the const again here. So we're going to say const uart base. Yeah, we're, we're going to capitalize it. It's actually the uart uh, 3 that we have here. So this is uart 3 base. And now we're going to say we define a function. Um, this is now the hello function. Uh, we're not going to pass any arguments. What we're just going to do is something horrendously stupid. We're just hammering the register with characters, okay? So how do we do this? Um, well, we just need to write to the UART base register. Uh, and how do we write to a register? Um, well, uh, this is uh, where, again, we um, look at this here just for reference. So uh, yeah, here in, in Norja. So let's look at the main.rs again and we copy over the uh, use read volatile and write volatile because that's exactly what we're going to do. Um, we don't need read here, we just need to write. Uh, but we're going to do this. We're going to say write volatile and write volatile will take an argument and the argument is, well, the destination and the source. And the destination is our UART, right? This here. And then the source. Well, what is the source? That is what we're going to write, right? So, um, yeah, just, just for an example, let's actually look at something that we have in here. Say so here, for example, right? We're going to, uh, we're going to write to this register. We need to say as mute something. So yeah, it needs to be, uh, mutable and then we're just writing a value to it right so yeah we're just using a constant value here and so let's do the same let's say uh, as star mute uh, well a u8 will be fine and the u8 shall be um, let's uh, let's pick a character so the character would be uh, hex 31 what is hex 31 that's just the it's just B, right? So hex 30 is A, hex 31 should be B, if I'm not mistaken. Or am I mixing things up? No, it's actually the digit one. Okay, we should then see one, one, one. Okay, now it's complaining. Why is it complaining? Because we need to say unsafe. Um, just writing to arbitrary locations in memory is by definition something unsafe, right? And the compiler cannot possibly know anything about it because this is very specific now to the chip that we're running on. So if you uh, use this address here uh, on a different chip, let's say my laptop here, for example, uh, you would find something different there and not the UART, probably. Okay, so now we get the hello function. Um, it's complaining here a bit. What does it say? Uh, constant is never used. Well, uh, it's actually being used here. Um, I don't know why it's saying that. Anyway, and we're not using the hello function yet. Um, but we're going to do this. We're going to say hello here. And how do we say hello? Well, actually, we want to do this while true. 
uh, we will just infinitely say hello, right? It says denote infinite loops with loop. Okay. Okay, Rust is happy now. Uh, we're infinitely just going to hammer the UART with, uh, you know, just the one bytes. And let's see if that works. So first of all, we need to compile this again, right? So we can just say cargo build. And as you see, we're not yet using the cargo x, uh, uh, x test command. Um, okay, so now what do we get? Uh, we should get this uh, binary here. So uh, just like... Um, so when, when we said cargo run, if you, if you recall, we said uh, cargo run and then we said file. Um, now we get this file again, right? And now it says, um, well, it's no longer, oh, hang on. This is x86. Oh, huh. Yeah, uh, because we actually need to run the build.rs file to build our binary now. Okay. Um, yeah, or do we get some, hang on, hang on a second. Um, when the above here is building, where do we get the output? It should actually be the same if I'm not mistaken. Uh, or do we, oh, hang on, hang on. Uh, in target, okay, now, okay. Now it should be in a different location. If we look at the um, date of the file here now, uh, like, you know, we can just list it. We actually see it's 2037 and that's not the current time, right? So this is from half an hour ago when we did the first uh, test. Okay, so we actually need to uh, look at this here. Um, so yeah, now it's in a different target directory and this here is now the target architecture that we're defining. Okay, so the build is fine. It's now an L64 bit executable for RISC 5 and it's statically linked with debug info not stripped. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it's no longer built for Linux, right? So yeah, it's a bit different now. So here above, um, it was saying for GNU Linux. We don't have that anymore. Okay, now how large is the file actually? It's just 7.9K, right? So it's, uh, it's enough to fit in Flash. Um, let's actually see uh, if, if we can already use this file now. So I prepared something for that uh, over here. Um, so I have this script now, which is uh, huh, down here. It's called JH7100 Reflash. And with that, I can now uh, write something new to Flash. It's just using the tools that we already used prior. Um, I need to supply the path to, um, to the binary. So I, I had a bit of a fancier script. Um, we, we can see that we maybe create something uh, in a similar fashion here. Um, but anyway, so what we need to say is, again, the whole path here and target debug, um, not, uh, yeah, BT0, right? So this is the file we just created. So we're going to do this and I will put the board in, uh, in the bootloader mode for flashing. It says waiting for bootloader mode. Uh, oh, yeah, right. Um, so, yeah, you, you can see something being uh, printed here. Um, that is not exactly what we wanted. So what I did was the following. Um, here. Uh, so this here is now TTY USB 0. Okay, that is actually fine then. Uh, and this down here is Minicom and Minicom is running on, oh, I think Minicom is also running on, on, on the same UART. Okay. Uh, like it's the, uh, USB UART converter, right? So, or, or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's, it's a bit unhappy. It's a bit unhappy. Okay. Let's, let's just kill all that stuff. Um, actually this year. So let's kill all, kill all, kill all Minicom. And let's kill all the Picocom. Okay, so, yeah. Um, this is where it gets messed up again. So we run Minicom with baud rate 115.200 
but that's now on the second header and on the first so yeah I, I will need to um i will do the following to make this easy now so i'm switching off um both of the usb uart converters and i'm going to turn them on gradually again and the first one <clears throat> sorry the first one i'm going to turn on is the debug one which is now available here and the second one is the one we switch to uh, which runs at a higher baud rate and so if i just turn on the board regularly now on the right hand side okay we get the output that we want and now when i say uh you know i go into boot mode then we see this prompt here okay so yeah now we're going to run this again uh reset okay now it's flashing well and then we can see if it actually worked as uh, we wanted um, or if you know nothing works at all yet and we still need to do something else but i'm hoping that the mass uh is already doing something and we got the first one 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 on uh, out of our terminal on the top right so yeah it's uh, now flashing our bt0 um yeah it's it's not large you see it's 8k so it's rather fast but still slow on the uh, low baud rate okay um yeah now i would like to do something else but yeah we're not going to do something else uh we're just going to say okay we reset now we get the sci five prompt and now i reset again and nothing happens nothing happens means uh we still need to do something more so yeah we're not seeing our one 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 yet okay so what else do we need to do um, the what else do we need to do is being answered by uh, oh oh look at this here actually okay so this is a 32-bit register um, so yeah let's do a very quick experiment actually and uh, let's close this here we don't need it anymore um, we also write to a 32-bit register now okay so I said mute u8 we're going to say mute u32 uh, we're going to cargo build again um, now we have a new file here right so we just built this 2122 that is from now uh, we're going to flash again and yeah I hope that's already it if not then well um we, we will need to do something else like you know bringing up some power rails or something so if, if you recall from the earlier uh, code that we already had there wasn't really much um that we had to do in order you know to bring up some basics on the board and i hope that will be the same again and i hope we can actually get away with really just doing nothing <laughs> just writing to the ui directly yeah, let's see if that works so yeah, awaiting confirmation, whatever. Okay, I'm resetting the board. And as you can see, uh, it's not doing anything. Yeah, I'm entering mass from again. Okay, so yeah. Okay, we still get to do a bit of uh, something more. Um, it could also be that this here uh, isn't yet enough and I should copy something else again. So yeah, let's have a look again for a comparison uh, into the boot zero for uh, the inner job and see if there is something else uh, that I may just have forgotten which is rather obvious okay so this is um, yeah clearing the cache and processes okay yeah so we can actually do this also um, that is disabling the interrupts right so MIE is the machine interrupt enable well it's just zeroing it okay let's do the same here um, what else do we want to do? This here is specific to the C906 core that is um, in the uh, D1 in the, uh, on the Nerja. Just like this here, that's a specific register. Uh, oh, yeah, this here is also a good idea, actually. Let's do this also. Um, yeah. Let's do that also. Oh, and actually, let's look again at the uh, linker script. So in the build.rs, um, 
Yeah, we, we had this section had main. We don't actually have it, right? So we only have text entry this year. Um, yeah, so we don't really need that. Uh, let's say cargo build again. And let's see. So if we look at the um, at this file here, uh, let's actually look at the opt dump. So how do we look at the opt dump? Um, we, we don't have the extra set up yet. Uh, so we will just say, well, we, we could actually see if the, um, if the rest of the extra, uh, extras code already, already does the job. So let's say cargo X task asm, and let's see if we get something. If we don't, never mind. Then we will just do it the simple way. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, okay. It's dying. Okay. Um, yeah. So we're, we're going to say risk five, blah, de, blah, op jump, risk five, 64, GNU, op jump, op jump, dash D for disassembly. And we are going to, oh, this is actually also something I just forgot. So <laughs> this is actually the alpha. So flashing the alpha doesn't really make any sense, right? So this is not what we need. Um, we actually need a raw binary. Okay, so yeah, that is something easy to fix. So yeah, when we get the um, BT0 file, uh, what can we do? We can actually do an opt copy, opt copy um, to uh, yeah, get our binary. So yeah, it's, it's similar to what's uh, here in my uh, shell history. So we can just say dash o binary, um, and uh, yeah. So this is um, this is now expecting a few arguments, which I don't remember. Uh, RIS five. Let's say RIS five. Okay, what was the previous opt copy that I uh, ever ran? So, yeah, we get this here. So the first thing we need to have is the elf and the next argument would be the output file. Okay, so let's do that. So we need to have the elf. Elf. Now we need the output. So the output would be, let's call it test.bin. Ah, uh, why is it unhappy? Is it direct? Yeah, of course it's a directory. Um, we need BT zero. Okay, so yeah. Um, now, if you look at this, it's actually just 68 bytes. What do we have in test.bin? Oh, if you look at this here, this could be familiar to you because it's really just a few raw instructions uh, for REST 5, so 73, uh, 73, 10. 40, 30, that looks very much like risk five. If you've seen risk five before, um, this will be very, very familiar to you. So yeah, 73, um, might actually be an Easter egg as a friend of mine just recently discovered. So Michael Engel was saying, uh, is that actually an ode to the, um, you know, the, the ham radio stuff because they are using 73 as a greeting sometimes. I don't know, actually. Anyway, so let's do this here. Um, let's use the X, uh, uh, the test bin file. Um, actually, I have that here in the subdirectory now, but yeah, never mind. So, yeah, instead of using this BT0, we're going to say source, source, mainboard, star 5, vision 5, BT0 test.bin. Okay. So, yeah, let's flash again. Uh, this time, well, the. Um, uh, the, the tool that is uh, being loaded into SRAM here, uh, which is then, you know, opening up something again to uh, write something to flash, um, takes longer to transfer. It's uh, 22K, but yeah, it's uh, very, very slow with the 9600 bots. Um, maybe we can actually make an improved version of it. So yeah, it will be still uh, very slow for the first part, but uh, uh oh, what, what happened here? Select a function to... What? Floating point exception? How do you get a floating point?
Let's just run it again. I don't know what happened here. It's a bit weird. Maybe, maybe because the file is so small and it's trying to do something like chunking and doing some like division and now we get a very small file so it doesn't really uh yeah I, I guess that is the case so yeah we will just extend the file a bit and yeah so what are we gonna do um to fix this uh we're going to do the following um we're just going to extend the file again a bit and if i'm not mistaken there is actually a unix command for doing that uh, I just forget the name. Um, so yeah, and instead of Unix, we're just going to search for Linux. Uh, expand file, sparse, whatever, something, sparse file. Uh, truncate, right. So we say truncate, and then we say S. Uh, I guess S is for size, and then the file name, truncate this dash S. Uh, let's make it, let's make it 16k actually, right? So that's the XRAM size, uh, the, the SRAM size. So we say test.bin is now 16k. Well, maybe 1k is already enough. We will see. Yeah, we're just going to try to flash this again. Yeah, funny things happen. And if that doesn't work, actually, I think um, that shall be it for today. And uh, yeah, next time we're uh, going to pick up where we left off. Um, we already get quite far, uh, get quite far actually, because uh, you know we got a bunch of boilerplate set up. We just pushed some changes already. So yeah, let's see. Ah, look, that is that is looking much better. Okay, so I'm hitting reset, and huh, we're not seeing anything. Yeah, no, we're not seeing anything. Okay. So yeah, I, I guess we, we still need to uh, do some in it actually with the uh, UART. Yeah, I just um, pushed reset again a few times. And sometimes you see, you know, just bogus characters appearing here. Um, yeah, that is, you know, because hardware. Uh, things like that happen. Anyway. um. Yeah, that shall be it for today. So yeah, just for a start, we um, uh, just for a recap, uh, we started with uh, looking at the uh, setup that we now need in Orbit. Uh, we bootstrap the first files for defining an X task for uh, building our code. Uh, we're not using that yet. We just um, create the boilerplate for later. And then we um, started creating a mainboard directory for the new mainboard now, which is the vision 5.1 here in this case. And uh, for that, we just um, drafted the uh, first stages binary. So yeah, we um, just get the uh, boilerplate, uh, again, boilerplate code, uh, which is really just for, you know, setting up the architecture. Uh, we get the build file now with the linker script. Well, and uh, a few uh, statements in the main.rs file that we copied over from our reference uh, code, which is from the D1. Anyway, uh, with that, uh, thank you very, very much. And uh, yeah, see you next time where we uh, see that we get some characters out of the yard again. Bye.